So today we're going to be talking about burglary uh, and the challenge that uh, we all face around that space. And you, you will have seen on the news in the last couple of weeks that just how big a challenge we're policing is currently facing in tackling burglary. And we all understand the impact it has on confidence, but importantly, on the victims of such, a, such an offence. In a recent panorama on BBC, uh, Andy Cook, Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabularies and Fire Services, stated that next year, around about a third of all our police resources will have less than five years service. So that means there's a significant lack of experience in the front line in dealing with um, burglary. And last year, the Police Digital Service, working with Doug Blackwood, who leads on the burglary portfolio within the National Police Chiefs Council, and one of the technology partners worked to develop a new power app which is freely available to forces using the PDS the Police Digital Service uh, Solutions Catalog to help frontline users to improve their knowledge around burglary and promote support both for the investigation and for victims. Now what's happened with Warwickshire they've done an ideal approach where they've taken the catalogue as the core product and built on that and made it further enhancements and Neil who's joining us today will be sharing that in a couple of minutes to explain what's been done and what the development of the force has done and what's been done. Now I'll recognise for some of you this will be the first time you've seen the burglary app uh, so Neil will take us through that so I think Neil if you could share your screen now and take us through what does it do and how does it benefit the force and importantly the, our communities? Uh, thank you, David. Yeah, I, so I think it's important, uh, per, uh, important firstly that I mentioned obviously the great work that's been done by Humberside's uh, Police Detective uh, uh, Superintendent Doug Backwoods and our own Deputy Chief Constable Alex Franklin Smith as the, 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 the national burglary leads who worked alongside the development company Tiski in producing the very first version of the burglary app back in 2022. And really since that point as a technical PM in Warwickshire myself, uh, I took on the lead of implementing this into the force uh, to do that uh, and to improve our investigation standards and ultimately uh, increase the detection rates to restore our confidence and our ability to crack down on residential burglary because we absolutely recognise the force that the country, you know, has as you know within the country has a real imp a real personal impact uh, that burglary has on our communities, and so we've kind of he heavily invested in customising and and sort of building on the app to better meet our requirements as a force. So yeah, what does it do? Uh, so the app is predominantly designed to be used by officers uh, live on scene at burglary incidents and provides a kind of an easy access mobile friendly uh, comprehensive checklist of investigative lines of inquiry based on the kind of national authorised professional practice uh, for burglary inve investigations which has been recently re-released re uh, after about 13 years since the last one came out I um, mean it allows the officers the ability to uh, to use a mobile phone to quickly and simply uh, and easily select and input information into the app so that nothing is missed uh, within the golden hour inquiries of a burglary incident um, but it also provides an automated emailing system for victims of crime, which I will uh, sh touch upon very shortly. So as part of our further development of the app since it landed within Warwick's year, uh, we've added things like OIC details to the automated victim advice and support emails. Uh, we've added further MOD, MO details and modus, op uh, modus operandi details to the drop downs. Uh, and we've enabled the user to easily see previous incidents that they've recorded as well uh, fit for, for improved kind of intel at the scene. And importantly, we've added the ability for the app to create a standard burglary dwelling investigation pack pro forma, which kind of meets the compliance really of the latest um, app uh, for burglary investigations. Um, so how does it benefit our force? Well, it improves our investigation submission process by creating that burglary dwelling investigation pack within our crime management system, uh, which is the standard pro form, which can be kind of easily interpreted by investigating officers, uh, which in our case is, is our proactive CID department. So it provides a standardised approach to presenting that information to assist the OIC in, in kind of investigating that incident. But the app also collates new and of course existing data, uh, data around the, the modus operandi specifics of the burglary, allowing us to identify sort of, sort of new trends uh, based on those new data sets. Um, so how does it benefit our colleagues? Well, I think it's a really important point to cover, David, as we, as we know that front, with our frontline officers, uh, they have to complete a number of administrative tasks several times a day. 
especially now within within sort of UK modern policing. Uh, so we we didn't want a new app to become be kind of a chore or it for, for it not to provide any real benefit to officers. So we spent a lot of time making this version of the app more intuitive uh, and more user friendly and ensured that that internal, the internal comms on this, um, which I'll go into detail very shortly, um, was was really paramount. But, but going through the list of benefits, as you can see on the street uh, on, on the screen, so we've obviously got saves, saves time by recording incident data live uh, on site. So that's using your mobile phone and being able to prevent uh, double keying as well into your pocket notebook. So, it, you know, information can go straight into your uh, into the app as opposed to writing the information twice. But it captures on that on scene information, but using a toolkit of handy prompts. Um, it has the ability to take um, and store files uh, within within that uh, record on the app so that the, the photographs can be very easily emailed back through to the officer, saving some time there in uploading, etc. Uh, but it also it has the ability to record house to house inquiries with some now new additional data that we've not captured previously. Um, it reduces that paperwork by automatically creating and emailing the burglary dwelling investigation pack. So it creates that pro forma document that I mentioned about uh, a few minutes ago. Um, in addition, um, it sends the victim and landlord advice attachments as well as a crime number, including OIC details. That's a really good function in kind of improving that victim's the victim's code. Um, and it reduces the likelihood of missed investigative opportunities by ensuring that each officer um, you know, has that list of, of inquiries that they go through whilst on scene. But it enhances our ability to review and analyze that new crime data, um, which you'll see very shortly when I when I demonstrate the app. Um, and one of the kind of the, the, the final top 10 benefit is that there's a built in sort of handy digital aid memoir uh, facility. Um, where it stores really important documents that can be can be really useful to officers um, on the scene. Now, how does it benefit our communities? So ultimately, the fundamental benefit of the app um, for our communities is to improve the prevention and detection of residential burglaries and hopefully bring in those offenders to justice. And the app makes sure that we that we get the, the, the right service first time, ensuring that all investigative lines of inquiry are conducted, but also by collating this new data to help us identify crime trends, patterns, which will not only assist in the detection of crime, but it will assist our communities in the prevention of crime as well, because we can uh, put out comms in relation to crime prevention methods, et cetera, via social media channels, et cetera. Uh, the app also provides an automated email capability to send the victims of crime uh, bespoke crime prevention advice, but, but also the OIC details, as I mentioned. So again it has a real emphasis on improving that sort of victims uh, victims code so i'll move on to the uh, the next slide so this is our internet page so as you can see here um, we've spent quite a lot of time putting information onto our internet page um, to to advertise the app we've got sort of how to access the burglary app through the power app obviously it can be used via phones and by laptops there's user guides on here uh, faqs and we've got a whole section on feedback um latest news and our campaign obviously is mentioned there which is op defender within warwickshire but let's see it in action and how it works now obviously we'll use anonymized data in fact we won't put a lot of data into it today but you will get a feel for what the experience of the officer is so neil if you'd like to share your screen for me thank you yeah so here we have a live demonstration of the burglary app now i'm not going to fill out an entire record but i just want to demonstrate some basic functionality sort of live so you can really get a feel for for how it works so as you can see uh, we've got the sort of initial intro page here where you can create a new incident, uh, view and saved incidents that are saved locally to your device um, if you haven't finished them yet. Uh, my incidents, so that's a catalogue of all the incidents that you have raised personally uh, using the app. And of course, the best practice advice and um, the search function at the very bottom that enables you to search for other burglaries using the our storm, our command and control uh, center system number. Um, so if I go into create new, automatically the storm reference number is generated. Um, so you'd simply put your 
your cry your your incident rest, reference number in here and your crime reference number if you know it at that particular point majority of the time that crime number is not going to be known so the record status you select to whether or not you're doing this live and scene or retrospective so if you've got an issue with your mobile or your your laptop device you can just select uh, retrospective so we'll, we'll create one live so as you can see now it, we're displayed with all of the different sections that need completing and handily on each section um, there's a counter of the number of items left to complete on that particular section and a, an option to retrospectively put in the crime number. So if we go into victim, this page will demonstrate how to put all of the victim's details in, but it also contains information around the OIC. So that's their contact number, uh, their station location, um, etc. And also we're, we're capturing things like victim risk factors. Uh, which we potentially haven't always captured before. So it just prompts the officers to collect that information. So if I go back to the main screen, I'll go now into offence details. So just to briefly go through some of these, we've got offence type, uh, residential burglary, and obviously various categories within that, um, depending on what your force want you to, to log um, in uh, uh, for the purpose of the app and, and the data that's collated. Entry type, photo of entry uh, and damage caused entry point. So again, some of this data that we, we may not have captured in full detail before that will help us build a, a better picture of, of crime and, and, and intelligence really. So we've got security features. Um, so you can select multiple uh, different security features as well. Specify the locks on windows, the exact time frame, start and end. Uh, the items taken, obvious items not taken. So that's, you know, a really, a really important thing. You know, if there's a set of car keys on the side that haven't been taken, clearly the, the motive may not have been uh, to take a vehicle and might have been more focused around, uh, you know, uh, gold, for instance. Um, search type and, and offender descriptions. So that kind of covers the offence details and we've got offence location. So the location covers um, things like location features, so whether or not it's uh, located next to a waterway, uh, a railway line, um, street is, is a street lighting, is a, is a poor quality boundary uh, around the property. And we've got things like property ownership. So, you know, was the property in, you know, uh, in use at the time? You know, is it a short, is it being let out for short term lets or is it student accommodation? Again, some of these things that perhaps not all forces will have always captured and it just helps to build that picture of burglary um, property occupation as well whether or not there was somebody in it at the time of the burglary so just going to uh, uh, one of the final sections report so that again there's a various uh, uh, things in here around neighborhood watch sees a crime attending uh, consent to share collected data so that's you know um, in, in terms of uh, putting out social media posts etc um, and are, are they aware of any burglaries nearby, et cetera? And of course, the the, the MO uh, of, of the crime. So if we go into house to house inquiries, so house to house inquiries now covers um, a bit more information that we probably would have always captured. So again, it, it inc includes security features, uh, if the person's seen anything unusual, but also to, to note whether or not, uh, if there's been no answer, for instance. So once that is complete, um, the, the officer can upload photos and then simply save and generate the, the burglary pack really. And that burglary pack then comes, comes down to you. Um, so yeah, I think, I think to be honest, David, that kind of concludes the, uh, the app, unless you've got any more specific questions around, around the app, the demonstration. That, that's a great reminder for the live audience to pop your questions into the chat and we'll come to them. And, uh, you know it, what it's basically doing is you could see the little uh, red asterisks next to the fields that needed to be completed as mandatory but it's really bringing a lot more structure to the data that needs to be collected and the information so that that can enable investigations you mentioned just finally there the burglary dwelling information pack who does that go to and what does it look like yeah, thanks, David. So um, absolutely. So on completion of that burglary investigation within the power app, the officer, uh, the completing officer gets an emailed uh, automated generated burglary dwelling investigation pack in the form of a Word document, which is attached onto the email along with a zipped up file containing any of the photos that are uploaded. 
Um, as we don't have uh, any integration yet into our crime management system, sort of key important parts of that crime are extracted and placed into the email, into the body of that email, as you can see, to enable the user to easily copy and paste it directly into the crime management system to kind of save time and prevent double keying, really. So I, I guess next it would be important for me to actually show you our kind of revised version of our burglary dwelling pack. So following the the new version of the national authorised uh, professional practice um a, a, a new a new one came out in terms of how we investigate burglaries and, and this is kind of compliant really this document that's been created recreated for warwickshire is now compliant with that particular document so i'll, I'll move on to the uh, the next slide so as you can see, this is our newly revised burglary dwelling investigation pack, which is laid out in a format that the investigating officers can easily read and decipher to kind of maximise efficiency with burglary investigations. And any revisions to the original record with the app can be changed uh, and a new uh, dwelling pack can be easily created and sent down to the office. So I think to conclude there, David, it's important that I mention that we are still uh, continuing to develop this burglary app and the current version of the app doesn't fully populate all of the fields yet within that burglary dwelling pack but that is on our sort of roadmap in Warwickshire to 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 work on great and there is a question that's relevant to this from Craig and it, it is a point about this is a moment in time at the you have it at right now but do you have any feedback in regards to the double keying of information officers who may have previously just added the information straight into the crime management system first time are now having to work through the power up and then receive an email and put the details and type it in to the crime management system to generate the crime report or do you find that wasn't how officers were working anyway or it was creating gaps of information and are you considering a connector as it moves forward later on yeah, absolutely. So I'll just I'll just touch on the very last point. So uh, the connector is something that we're working on uh, within the within our crime management system. You know, potentially using robotics uh, RPA to begin with, uh, but then with a future uh, ambition really to to start implementing APIs. Um, so in Warwickshire, um, you know, a lot of people did fill in the the burglary dwelling investigation pack. Um, however, there wasn't much consistency with it being completed properly. Uh, fields are being missed out, etc. So this really just uh, enables that process to be kind of fully ticked off, really, and and, and allows the officer um, the opportunity to to kind of not miss anything that they're they're typing. But in terms of double keying. Obviously, the, the, this information on the burglary, the burglary pack at the moment is is um, some of the key data that you need to create a, a skeleton crime record within our crime management system. Um, you can easily copy over from the email and this document simply gets uploaded to our crime management system. But in terms of reporting uh, out sort of the back end of, of, of all of this in, in SharePoint, that's something that we're looking at creating um, a, a proper dashboard within uh, Power BI. Yeah, and really what you were saying to us when we were planning this, it's about helping the consistency at the time of capturing the information and the options to connect it into systems later on are, are available to us. It's not that this solution isn't compatible, it's more that the challenge is getting it into the other systems, isn't it? Absolutely. So that's what we're working on. And if we can improve the data capture right at the front end and improve the experience of victims. And, and I think that's a really important bit. And perhaps you could just show us what sort of thing the victim gets in terms of the advice. Again, this is a, a part of the process that is automated and saves the, uh, the frontline officers some time. So what happens if you're a victim of burglary and, you, and the officer uses this approach? Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, you know, I think it's a really important part of the app, isn't it, really? Uh, and it's something that most forces always are striving to do better at, you know, that victim's code and, and, and making sure the victims are updated. So as you can see on screen here, we've got an example of, a, of the victim advice email with bespoke attachments and, and officer contact information, which is ultimately decided uh, by the officer. So uh, the, the officer has uh, the, the ability to select a host of, of documents um, which can be kind of easily added to or amended to uh, by administrators to be sent out to the victim on the prevention as well as the, as well as the detection of crime, but also includes information, can include information on victims providing statements. So again, reducing that that uh, that, that need uh, uh, to, to use paper as well. You know, we, we have a, a number of documents in Warwickshire that when, when a statement is taken from a victim, there's a victim advice leaflet that we give. 
this just gives you know an area of our business the the ability to cut down on that footprint really of using paper so it's it's a it's a digital improvement digital transformation in terms of in terms of that and i guess that sort of any subsequent process that may may follow as well so i think you know it's it's really keeping the victim informed and supported throughout the process really david and I think the point is, this is an iterative approach. We have this solution, which was based on the burglary app. Now this has enhanced it even further and we keep progressing. So what's been the feedback like from our, our colleagues on the front line who are using it? Actually, really, really positive feedback, uh, actually, David. Um, it was one of those things, you know, we're, we're, we're moving down into that culture of, of using power apps. And it is a big culture change um, going into that, that power apps because it, it's not a, a widely used thing at the moment in, in, in policing. So the feedback that we're getting is, is, is really positive. As you can see on, on the screen, this has come directly from, from officers. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's being it's being taken as a as as a really good method of preventing that double keying really and and um you know it negates the, the the full need to use your pocket notebook i know that your pocket notebook is of course always integral to policing but there's elements of this which will be covered in the app and can be rec you know recorded via that so it is speeding up that process for officers um, as you can see here, you know, a person is saying it, it worked for a breeze uh, for, for him. Uh, he was able to fill out the aspects of the investigations when he returned to, to the station and he was able to create a, a quick uh, crime uh, record on Athena using that detail that was provided in the email. So really positive uh, news and getting some good data back as well. And I, and I think that's the point. This is to enhance that big challenge we have of uh, experience of our officers in terms of how they're able to use the tools, providing with the support so they can confidently deal with the victims. Because we all know, of course, that uh, once somebody's become a victim of burglary, there's a really significant chance of them being a victim again. Uh, and, you know, it's a very, very intrusive crime. And we do need to make sure we're, we're really focused on how we can improve the front end. Keep your questions coming in and uh, Neil will stay online and answer a few more questions in a second. But I think whilst you're popping your questions in, it gives me an opportunity just to remind you of some of the things that are coming up in the very near future uh, that you on one that's a little bit further away, but is an absolutely key thing for us to get across. Um, we are today announcing that you can now pre-register to join us at the uh, Police Digital Summit in September. It's our biggest digital policing event that we held each year we had over 500 delegates join us last year absolutely huge you can pre-register now on the pds website scan the qr code that's on screen now that doesn't guarantee you a seat at the summit and it's certainly if you're a sponsor watching this it doesn't get you in there what it does is give you access to pre-information about the uh, summit so that you when you we do announce the delegate packages and the sponsorship packages and exhibition packages that are available you'll be one of the first to know about it so just scan the qr code hit the link that's in the chat for you and you can get into that and we can move, get you along to join us in Brighton in September. Believe me, there's a lot of work going on to plan that event right now to, to get that even better than last year. Another one to remind you of, and this is where we've still got a handful of places left and we're really keen to hear from internal comms colleagues and other colleagues, maybe not just in training, but wider around business change, around the modernising learning and development in policing. That's taking place right at the beginning of February. You can get involved in that. Uh, more details on that. You can scan that QR code or click the link that's going to be in the chat or on the video and you can then get it along and join us for that event. So there's only about 20 or so places left at that. So we're really keen to get your places secured on, the, on that as we, we're moving closer to February. It's already halfway through the month. And those are some of the other events that we've got coming along in the next few weeks and months. And if you head over to the PDS events se section on the website, you'll be able to get all the information you need on that. Let me just see if there's any more questions that have come in. Uh, there's one here, Neil, if I can come to you. How are victims without or don't want to give email address given access to the information? Is that the same as it always has been? Yeah, ab absolutely. So there's still going to be a you know a basic requirement to carry the you know a, a certain amount of paperwork and literature. Of course, you know there's there's lots of victims that range in in all different age ranges that that may not have access to um, 
to electronic equipment that will show us information. So uh, absolutely. I, I noticed that there's another question there, uh, David, uh, around, uh, I think it was from the, the original um, uh, person who posted the question around uh, the integration into crime management system, but mentions when when will this be released to the catalogue? Um, so certainly we, we have got some work left to do on, on the burglary app um, to get it into an even better place than it currently is. Um, so we are working with PDS to get that uploaded. So I'm going to anticipate that at some point in the next few months, we will be able to um, potentially look to, to, to release that into the catalogue. That's fantastic. And uh, I won't miss the opportunity to mention Len, who's commented that there's an updated version of the stop and search one going into the catalogue very soon as well. And um, thanks, Len, for that. Uh, so. We've covered all the questions now, I think. I think it's just a reminder that colleagues, if you want to give us your feedback on the Wednesday, on the Wednesday webinars and how you think they go and what if you've got something you want us to cover. So again, it's another QR code to scan or you can head over to the links in the website. We really are keen to make sure we reach you. We've got a huge range of subjects coming up. We've had some fantastic meetings this week with colleagues in different organisations who've got things to share with policing and we'll be uh, the vehicle for that to make sure that we're reaching as many people as possible with all the information that's helping them to, to deliver frontline services. This is about making a difference on the front line. So, and again, if you ever do need to get in touch with the Police Digital Service, just uh, head over to the website, scan the QR code, and a member of the business engagement team will be able to follow it up with you and uh, pick up what's going on. And speaking of the business engagement team, there's always a reminder of each force has got a dedicated resource in PDS who can help you to support you. I really want to thank Neil and for bearing with us and we had the slight technical issue last week in terms of managing our webinars. It's great that we've been able to deliver that one today. Burglary is such an important subject. If you've worked closely with the frontline policing, you'll know how impacted burglary is as a crime. It's something we really do want to focus on. Thank you all for joining us and I hope you can join us next week for our next webinar and uh, hopefully I'll see some of you tomorrow whilst we're at the Innovation Today event. So thanks a lot for joining us all. Thank you. Thank you.